guys, Tim here. <clears throat> We're going to do another build video. This is going to be my little editing rig. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not quite going as, as far as Logan and the old Honey Badger. Uh, I'm just going to use a, a Gigabyte board, but I like the Wi-Fi on the Gigabyte better than the Asus Solutions. Um, so it is a 4-pin. I'm not going to overclock this. The stuff I render is not that intensive. So, you know, it's not, I don't need to overclock. If, if it gets up to its boost speed on the CPU or maybe just a little bit of an overclock, that'll be good. You know, other than that. But I like the black and the, the gray of this board. So if you've noticed, I still have the cover in. And I've already pre-applied the back plate. Because there is, of course, no CPU cutout in this case. Or you'd have a hole in the bottom of your board. Or for the bottom of your case, excuse me. So I'm just going to dry fit this in here and make sure everything fits. I've already got the back plate in the or the uh yeah, the back plate in the case. So I'm just really trying to see if I can get everything squared up in here and that the back plate's going to have enough clearance. Uh, this case is really tight. So I had to I had to lift the board there a little to get it to go in. That seems pretty good. It sits in nice and the back plate hasn't moved around on me. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this down then. So if you wanted to, you could take this crossbar out. I'm going to try to be lazy and not take it out if I can help it. Just depends on if I can get angles on the screws here that I'm looking for. I might have to take it out actually. Just depends. Yep, well, okay. There's a first good bit of information. So to get to these two front screws, you do need to remove that crossbar unless you have a really small screwdriver, which I don't have out here with me right now. Just going to do that, take care of that off camera, get it screwed in, we'll be right back. Okay, so we got the crossbar off right there. Made screwing things in a lot easier. So now we're going to remove the 140 fan from the back of the case. And the reason we're going to do that is because I am going to mount a liquid cooler in this case. And the reason for that is just because I have it, to be honest with you. Um, I like to keep my liquid coolers running so that they don't go bad. And I have one that hasn't been turned on for a couple of weeks, so I want to get it in something. Plus, it should, uh, you know, it helps cool a little better than air coolers. and Not a ton better, but a little. Than, except for the big air coolers, which I really don't want, you know, some massive air cooler on here. I like the idea of having a little extra space um, for air to move around in this case. I'm going to be putting probably a GTX 670 in it. So I'm already going to be introducing, and it's a non-blower style, so I'm already going to be introducing some heat into this case. So I'm going to try to do what I can to not add more. We'll get it on the exhaust. So this is the Intel cooler um, by Asetek. It's pretty much the same cooler everybody has out that's of this configuration, except for some of the people that actually make their own. And we're just going to use, I'm just going to test fit this right now to see where I want. So, the 20, so I definitely want the coolant pipes on this side, because the video card is going to be down here. And you're going to use the 120 holes uh, to screw it into, and we're just going to screw it directly into the radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted. Oh, before I do that actually though, it's a great point. We want to very loosely thread, Let's see if I can get you guys. So if you don't do this ahead of time, it'll be a complete disaster to try to do later. And you want to just barely, 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 barely thread them on. 
just to the point where they hook in. Okay. That looks like it's good. So we'll take it back off. And I'll go ahead and put the CPU in. So that all connected okay. Sorry, you guys are getting to see me test fit stuff because I haven't test fitted it on this platform yet. So I'm going to go ahead. I need to clean off my CPU. I'm going to go ahead and get that done. I'll get the ring inserted. I'll get the CPU put in. And I'll get the cooler on. And then we'll be right back. Okay, so we got everything installed for the most part here uh, for the motherboard. So I already did the cooling. We've got the motherboard and the processor in with the, uh, the cooler attached to it. And I will do cable management later. But there won't be much cables in this case, to be honest with you. So what we have left to do for a functioning PC is we need a power supply, our RAM, and some hard drives. So we'll do that all next time. And then I'm going to do some uh, benchmarks with this cooler and this uh, i5, this is a 3770K, where uh, I'm going to actually remove the, well, if, if I have a chip that has varying uh, core temperatures, I might remove the thermal spreader on top, the heatsink spreader and see if different thermal paste will actually help. So tune in next time guys and tell them this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. Uh, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.